Yeah. Okay, guys, I'm dressed with. Uh, sorry, I'm not dressed with. I'm <laughs> joined by the very smartly dressed Eddie. Uh, looking very. I was a bit casual. Yeah, I was a bit casual last night. People start making comments. Eddie, you're not wearing a suit. So I thought I'd put the suit back on today. Well, you look very smart. Yeah, I do. And you look very fresh as well. Usually by the end of towards the end of the week, mm. you are maybe starting to feel it. Yeah. Because you're getting everybody asking you the same questions. Sure. You look like you're really up for oh, it. This I'm week. really excited about this show. We've had a great run lately, of course. Although a Coley Chamberlain didn't play out like we wanted to, it was still a great event. The Kell Brook fight was a night was brilliant. The Dillian White fight was brilliant. Obviously we've got this big show and we've got Amir Khan at the end of April, Danny Jacobs April 28th, Hay Bellew on May 5th. So loving life at the moment. Everything's delivering. Uh, all the fans are getting behind the events and great times for British boxing. Well, we're here at AJ Park and now it's only two days away. But how have you been now? Are you excited? Are you nervous? Very nervous because it's a very tough fight and I know anything can happen. Um, you know, it's one of those fights where it can hinge on you know, an exchange, one punch. Both guys are young, undefeated, fast and fearless. So uh, yeah, it's a big fight, everything's on the line and, and you know, we're very hopeful for the win. Because of how big AJ has become now, he's more of a sporting star, not just in boxing, but he's become a celebrity now. How nervous do you get when he fights because of the potential in terms of where he could go, in terms of the, the money he can generate or the potential to make boxing an even bigger sport? How nervous do you get when he steps in the ring it's just, one last It's just about winning really and about competition. You know, we all love to win as a team, so I don't really think about the money or what's next. It's just that moment and getting the, the victory on that night, and that's all that really matters uh, to Anthony and, and to the team. So we know what comes with it. You know, the glory, the money, the celebrity lifestyle, all that stuff. Some of which he, he's bothered about, some of which he's not. Um, but ultimately, nothing matters without victory. And uh, as a team, that's what we work towards. What type of fight do you think it will be on Saturday night? I think it'll be an interesting fight. I think Parker's going to move a lot. I think AJ's going to try and um, control him with a jab. Then I think there's going to be very fast exchanges at times. But with Anthony, he always has the ability to, t to rip up the scripts at any time. But like he talks about, I want to show my boxing on the inside and off the jab. But once they start trading leather and he smells blood, he's in. So um, I think it's going to be an explosive fight with, with some excellent technical boxing at times. But again, the opportunity for the fight to end at any time. People talk about how durable Joseph Parker is, but AJ looks so razor sharp. You know, he's coming in light and fast for this fight. And I think Parker's going to soon realise in the fight how strong he is. At the press conference on Tuesday with the head he looked very tense. Mm. Why, you know, why did they go back for the second? Uh, that was me. I told him to go back. So is that yeah, just you yeah, you just just for the media really. But he's edgy in this fight. No, I wouldn't say nervous, but he realises what's on the line. And there's been a lot of stuff said by the team in the build-up which sits in his mind. You know, he hasn't got anger, but he knows what's been said and he knows these guys are serious. So he definitely has an edge to him about him in this fight, but I think that's a good thing. I think you're going to see a punishing performance. Do you feel he's got more of an edge for this fight than when he did when he fought Klitschko? Much, much more of an edge because there was too much respect in that fight. You know, it was all friend. Klitschko did a great job of old manning him in the build-up. Mate, you know, little bro. Yeah, and they sort of got in. It was like, OK, OK. And then as they got going and Klitschko started hitting Joshua, I think he started thinking, hold on, what's going on here? So this one is different. There's more of an edge. And I think he'll be ferocious from the first bell. And the Deontay Wilder situation, he was supposed to be ringside, he's not now. What happened? How come he's not going to Nothing, I don't know. I can't understand their minds. Like, this is the biggest heavyweight fight out there right now with the entire worldwide media here. He needs all the help and exposure he should get. He should be here. But I'm not part of his team. It's not part of my decision. And, um, you know, for us, all the focus is on Joshua and Parker. It's obviously been a fight which has been talked about a lot, the potential for AJ Wilder. How difficult do you think that fight is going to be to make now because it's been talked for so long and there just hasn't seen I, th I think it can get made, but I keep saying to people, you know, Deontay Wilder says I've wanted this fight for years and years, and how many times have his team approached us to try and make the fight not won? So I can't really make it out, and sometimes they don't even get back to me, sometimes talks break down, but no one's. Like, if my fighter wanted to fight so badly, I would sleep outside the house of another promoter to try and make it happen. I would call him 10 times a day. I would annoy him so bad that he has to come and meet me to try and find some kind of light at the end of the tunnel to make this fight. But it doesn't exist. So you've got three different uh, managers, Shirley Winkle, uh, Al Heyman, and um, Jay Diaz. Like, do they even talk? I don't know, is it like Chinese whispers? that we want the fight and then it gets to the end and it's something completely different. But he should just call me and I'll sit down and tell him exactly what our plans are and how we can make this fight happen.
So I spoke speak to Dave Higgins on Tuesday after the press conference and he was saying look, before the Parker fight was made that they felt they had to do all the antics such as trying to get the mm -hmm. clips of mm -hmm. AJ being knocked down and that, to make a fight and to build Parker's But that's how you do it, what are they doing? Yeah. I mean all Deontay Wilder's doing is just talking on some chat show that's got about five people listening to it. So it's madness where he could be here in front of the world media talking about like he could stand up here today in front of the entire world media and give his side of the story about why he wants the AJ fight and we don't but he chose to he chooses to go on an internet radio station like this is why no one knows who he is so and we also a couple of weeks ago we saw uh, Dillian White defeat Lucas Brown mm. what was your thoughts on Dillian's performance? It's a really good performance I mean you know as always in those fights, people are quick to say, oh, Lucas Brown didn't look great, but what about, a, it was a great performance from Dillian White. Brilliant shot selection, great body punching. He broke him down, and it was a devastating knockout. It was a showreel knockout that did massive numbers on Sky, massive numbers on HBO, and it was a huge night for the career of Dillian White. If you could choose now, what would be your preference? Then would you rather see AJ versus Wilder or Dillian? I want to see both. That's my preference. Would that, I would like to see um, Wilder fight White in June, and then I would like to see the winner fight AJ in December. So what is the situation in terms of a mandatory position? Or no? Nothing yet. He's number one challenger. There's no mandatory being called, but at some point it will be. If we make the fight now with Dillian White, there'll be a rematch clause for Deontay Wilder. If we don't, and it's made as a mandatory, there'll be no rematch clause for Deontay Wilder. So, But it's not a case of you have to fight Wild, uh, White to fight Joshua. If you don't want to, we can just talk about the Joshua fight. If you want to do two fights, we'll do two fights. But how can we even talk about it if no one wants to come back to me and press the conversation? And I'll speak to Dave Higgins again, and you're saying that there's a rematch. Why did you bother speaking to Dave Higgins? Because he said he was the best promoter. Oh, right, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he's uh, saying that there's a rematch clause in AJ's contract. Mm. Is there one in Parker's? No. So there's not just that age? No. And like Dillian White, look. Do you pick up to you what he's got to say? I'm, I'm just doing an interview which we're live and I've just said you just called me so give me 10 minutes and I'll call you okay bye <laughs> oh Dillian yeah yeah go on um, yeah touch on Dillian as well his celebration on Saturday night yeah terrible <laughs> went to kick something fell over but he was just very excited it was a big night for him and now the only other tall sorry I've just touched on that I just moved past that Tyson Fury is what mm -hmm. I was going to come on to he's been in the limelight He's saying those rooms coming out about your time with Frank Warren, no he mm -hmm. hasn't. What do you know about the situation? Are you I don't know, I mean I think that I had a different ideas of who he wanted to fight compared to who he wanted to fight. Um, I expect him to sign for Frank Warren next week probably. Um, kills the chance of an AJ fight, but at the same time that fight is so far down the line having spoken to Tyson in terms of who he wants to fight etc. What's his progression in, in Slow. And I don't blame him. But obviously I can't put him on a certain platform for a certain amount of money against a certain level of opposition. So is this where you were saying that there's the possibility that AJ would retire before? No, I didn't say that. I just think that everything's so slow, isn't it? And if yeah. he wants to have two or three fights against, that's another year. And then you start thinking, what does AJ do in a year or two years' time? Who knows? But I'd like to make that fight. But obviously there's a very quick path to make that fight through us. And also, what was your thoughts on the Dana White offer for AJ? I'll just take my percentage and go and retire. That was, <laughs> that was what I was thinking. But I think the UFC have sort of realised that the number was a little bit uh, exaggerated from Gareth and they're probably thinking, I wish they wouldn't have said that amount. But as, as Anthony says in his stuff, he's happy for us to go and sit down and talk to Dana White, top rank, whoever's got opportunities. But Anthony's in complete control of his career and that's quite a unique setup and model that he has. And he wouldn't have that with certain people who tend to like to call the shots. And you know, one thing that Anthony is able to do is, is call all the shots. And he's developed a great team around him, not just through us, but with AJ Boxing, who control his commercial interests as well. So, um, yeah, happy to have the conversation. But uh, I think AJ's got the perfect model. And to touch on the rest of the card for Saturday night, Price for Vetkin. Mm. What, what a surprise this was for David. It's a great fight. Yeah, it's a great opportunity for him. And I like what he said in the, uh, in the press conference about... I just. I took the fight and I just felt something good's going to happen to me. And I get that feeling as well. But sometimes you make a fight, like if David Price couldn't punch, I will give him absolutely zero chance against Alexander Povetkin. But I do believe he has the power to knock him out. And I know he's a massive underdog, but 
stranger things have happened and the whole place would erupt if he could land one on Povetkin's chin. And then you've got Anthony Crawler as well, continuing to build his way back up into World Top. Yeah, a good win against Ricky Burns, and I think we've had so many big fights for Crawler at the arena, it's good to him to come back here and uh, you know get a little bit of pressure off the shoulder but enjoy a massive night. He's got a tough fight against Ramirez, that'll be a good fight, and hopes to go on and challenge for a world title after. And Ryan Burnett, well, just before we touch on his fight, what was the situation with he had to give up his... He had uh, two mandatories. Um, one was with um, the WBA, one was with the IBF and um, the WBA one was very easy to make. We did a deal straight away and we decided to drop the IBF belt. So how frustrating is it for yourself as a promoter, for Ryan as a fighter, you, you're trying to unify the entire division? Yeah, but it's, it's very difficult to do and you've got that, that's why we have to make the Wilder fight soon because otherwise it won't be for the Undisputed Championship because mandatories will get called and you know politics will get in the way. So for Ryan there was no way out and you know he just wants to progress his career, he's still only young, still learning and doesn't want any disruptions and that's why he carried on with the WBA. And how are you seeing his fight going on Saturday? Tough fight, not a lot of people know about Parejo, he's a former world title challenger, he's a good fighter, um, he comes with a strong team and Gilberto Mendoza knows him and his team and said that you know, they're serious, I think it'll be a good fight, I think Ryan will look great. And to touch on the Olympians as well, all of them real starting to progress. Yeah, really good, all, you know, coming in first title fights for Joe Caldino and Josh Kelly who's got a great fight against Carlos Molina. Um, Joshua Boazzi looks the real deal, so all those Olympians now really starting to move along. And my final question, have you got any funny or weird stories where you've been recognised in public and asked for a photo or an autograph? Uh, well, not really, but I've had a few people come up to me when they had a few beers and say, Eddie, Eddie, any chance of a photo? And I go, yeah, come on lads, and they just give me the phone. <laughs> and grab their mate and go like that so there's a few of them but it's hard when people are asking me for photos at fights because generally You've they've had about eight pints and I've had none so I'm not really on their level well Eddie thank you cheers mate thank you